Represented here, although I must apologize to those of you whose background is India because I never saw <laughs> India. I never saw India. I was only there for a refueling stop in the middle of the night on a flight from Taiwan to London, England. <laughs> but we, I want to rectify that. Okay. You have seen it here, Festival of India. But, but you are the contribution. Your young people in our schools. Academic prowess, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, people with an Asian background in our country uh, have the highest standard of living of any immigrant group that we've ever known. I got a letter the other day and uh, it picks out one country represented here, but I'm sure it's typical of all of you. Just happened to be from a young man who 10 years ago, 10 years ago last April, was in a boat off the Vietnam. They had some water left, but no food. And then a rescue ship came along, and he was taken to an island refugee camp. Now, I, he didn't say how long he was in that camp, but anyway, that's just part of the 10 years. And then the remainder of the 10 years, uh, he, he came to the United States. Just think of it, 10 years in that background, different language, and in that 10 years in our country, he graduated from high school with honors, won a scholarship to Harvard University, and was writing to tell me at age 23, he'd been 13 years old in that boat. At age 23, he was now in Dartmouth Medical College, mm -hmm. studying to be a doctor. But, uh, and I appreciate, incidentally, the support that I've had so far, so many of you with regard to our tax reform, it's not dead, it's just sleeping while the fellows are out of town. <laughs> uh, I'll look forward to having your support to when they come back. They're going to have to understand that the people want that. The other thing, I'm glad to see Bob tell it here, is all of your participation out there in the private sector, which is most important in this particular country. But uh, I'm glad to see that you have an interest also in participating in the public end of our country and our society in government. I've uh, not been the greatest fan of government throughout my life, and uh, serving in government hasn't changed my mind. There's still many improvements that can be made, so welcome. consideration and sensitivity to our concerns are deeply appreciated. And today, you know, there are more than 5.1 5 million Asian Americans. We are the fastest growing minority group. However, as you mentioned, we have the highest average family income, and our children are striving to work hard in schools. And um, many people do very well in science, medicine, engineering, and business and all. 
However, in the area of politics, you know, we have a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our major concern is that, uh, you know, among so many well-educated and talented Asian Americans, only very few are appointed to this administration and policy-making level. That's why I was happy to see Bob. That's something you better change. <laughs> right. We feel that Asian Americans are equally qualified to make unique contributions to this country um, because of our bilingual um, and the cultural background. So we feel that Asian Americans can serve as bridges of communications to promote U.S. trade. Uh, scientific cultural exchanges, diplomatic function, and U.S. information services to Asian countries. <coughs> and uh, most of us have first-hand experience with communism. That's why we love freedom and democracy <laughs> and the United States. And we are so proud to be part of this great country. And uh, we do want to participate and to make contribution to this country. And we all love you and support you as our president. Well, thank you very much. And we're very proud that you are Americans here with us. And if it'll encourage you any a little bit, um, things have improved. In my grandfather's time, who was the first one on my father's side to come to this country from Ireland, uh, we had a situation then where in many cities there were signs <coughs> No Irish or dogs allowed. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what the Irish turned to predominantly, particularly in the northeast of our country, politics. <laughs> Became kind of their, their favorite stamping ground. So, but uh, yes, I, we should do more about that. And particularly so since I happen to believe that mm -hmm. while for a long time, due to our heritage and the discovery of America coming from the other side, uh, on the settling of, it, of the Atlantic, that we thought of ourselves more attuned to Europe, I happen to believe that we're also a Pacific nation on the rim of the Pacific, and our future and future progress is going to be to the West. So, welcome aboard. <laughs> so, President, uh, on, I would like to talk on behalf of the Indian community. We are very grateful to you and thank you for opening up the initiative your administration has taken up uh, in opening up India similar to what President Nixon did for China in the 70s. This initiative has resulted in increased trade and commerce and more uh, cultural, social, economic as well as scientific exchanges. And we would also like to thank Mrs. Reagan for presiding the American Committee for Festival of India, which has been a great event in the United States. Well, I think highly of India's prime minister, new prime minister, to He is following your step. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, as far as we are aware, I think you are the first president made this opportunity available to meet with Asian American leaders. I know all of us will never forget it and be grateful to you for this opportunity. That shows how much you are concerned about all American people. We want you to know that we are behind 100%, in fact, 150% in regard to <laughs> supporting freedom, particularly the policy toward Nicaragua and also to the Libya. We hope that we will have many other opportunities to share the ideas with you and your staff, sir. An article appeared in the Washington Post said, Asian Americans outperform others in school and work. Academic and business and industry sectors recognize our talents and they are making the most effective use of it. And we like to see similar kind of usage of our talents. If we can do well in science, in business, then we can likewise want to contribute to make America even greater. We are delighted that you brought the American spirit back. We are proud to be American. In fact, I give many speeches on the meaning of American freedom. And many times I quote you, sir, because I believe our president is the leader of the freedom. From our discussion with the uh, IDAO staff, Linda Chavez's office, and uh, Bob Toto's office, we've been very impressed with their responsiveness. In fact, the fact that we're meeting with you, 
they've been very responsive to us. And they've been very responsive to our Asian American Leadership Conference. That uh, we understand that Asian Americans are uh, actively recruited. In fact, Mr. Bob Toto mentioned that just before you enter into it. And Mr. Toto, we will send you some resume. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that is why we are here to thank you and your staff for allowing us to have this opportunity. And we hope we'll have good results. Uh, Mr. President, according to California Institute of Technology study, 67% of Asian Americans voted for you in 1984. <laughs> and probably, if you run again in 1988, you'll probably have 85% of the Asian Americans. So, uh, Mr. President, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. Again, we want to repeat Jane's statement. We love you and we appreciate you and we are behind you 150%. Thank you very much, Mr. President. According to the script, I'm supposed to speak last, so <laughs> it's going to be very, very brief. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I'm supposed to summarize what my colleagues have said as our role model for one lines. Let me attempt to translate into one line what my colleagues have said in so many lines. What we're trying to tell you, Mr. President, is we may not look like apple pies, but we certainly taste just as good. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. President I also would like to add that although I'm talking as a co-chair of the Asian American Voters Coalition, I've just been appointed recently as a judge of the Orphans Court in Prince George's County, Maryland. Now, quite inadvertently, there is no reference made to our memorandum about the judiciary in the United States. The coalition has done something great in the state of Maryland, and we know that this president, this great president, would do for us nationally what we have done locally. One point that I would like to stress is that when the Asian immigrant comes to this country, he comes normally from a country that's steeped in what is called conservative philosophy. He comes to this country and he exposed and he's exposed to what is known as the liberalism or the concept of liberalism. What invariably happens is the Asian immigrant draws from both the conservative and the liberal philosophy, and he comes up the winner because he is in an in an enviable position of striking a delicate balance between civil and human rights and property rights, and that is the Asian immigrant born of unique cultural and historical experiences. On that note, Mr. President, thank you very much. Well, I can understand what you said, and I spent most of my life a good deal liberal Democrat. Only <laughs> 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 recently a, a Republican. Uh, I, I don't think I changed so much in our country. I think the views of our two parties changed. And, uh, I found that I was more comfortable with the same views that I'd had, and I've often cited the Democratic platform of 1932, which was my first vote uh, cast in, and cited that platform today, and you would have to ask yourself, which party could today run on that platform? They advocated a 25% reduction in the cost of the federal government, the elimination of useless bureaus and departments and agencies, and the return to states and local communities, the authority and autonomy that had been unjustly seized by the federal government. And uh, I think that sounds kind of like, <laughs> 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 I, just, I just followed that and went, went over to the other party. <laughs> Mr. President, there are over 20,000 citizens and uh, immigrants who have medical degrees who are not practicing in this country. If Senate Bill 1730 comes, is passed and signed, they'll be completely cut off from their uh, field. Would you consider appointing a commission to look into what can be done about people who are already here, who are in the medical profession? Ah, let us look into that, yes. Right. Please, we we'll appreciate Thank you that. for bringing that to my we, attention. We understand the clout the AMA has and the pressure they are putting on the mm -hmm. uh, lawmakers, but you can do this one very easily without mm -hmm. it. Thank you. General, your last line is supposed to be for Mr. Mr. President, I'm Andrew Chin, President of the Organization of Chinese Americans. On behalf of Chinese American community, again, fellow other Asian leaders, thank you for the great service. You are people's president, and we feel especially close to you. Many things which you promote 
kind of reflecting the tradition of values which we cherish as, as Asian Americans. Chinese Americans, the longest uh, immigrant, and also the most severely or harsh is discriminated uh, ethnic minority in this country. And uh, really, uh, I think uh, what uh, uh, Jim, Jim mentioned, this is a his historical occasion.